Hello and welcome to She TV, the place to become powerfully feminine from the inside out. And today we are talking about how to go from unconscious to conscious and your feminine power. Before you do anything else, if you haven't done this yet, I want you to take the Feminine Archetypes quiz. It's pertinent to our conversation today. And how you'll do that is you're going to go to powerfullyfem.com forward slash quiz. Even if you've done it before, you can do it and rediscover, rediscover where you're at now, right? And before we dive in here together, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe over here. I publish live streams and videos every single week on the topics of feminine power and energy. Um, today what I'm discussing is how to move from unconscious to conscious awareness. And essentially what I want to dis discuss with you today is how that pertains to the false feminine and the true feminine. This core premise or model through which I discuss feminine power and energy is that of the feminine archetypes. The false feminine being the maid and the princess and the true feminine being the queen and the priestess. Now why I've created this is it's to give you a lens to bring things into focus, okay? So what I realized out there in the world is that there's a boat load of confusion about what feminine even is, what it means. And then once I get what it means, then how does it feel? <laughs> and how does that look for me? How does that feel for me? Right? As we share this journey of rediscovery of feminine power, which we know as women today in this modern world has been all but erased from the picture. Okay. So anyone that's sort of in my world and as we're working together here, we are in this process of rediscovery of the true feminine power and that it is in fact incredibly powerful and it is in fact what the world is desperately wanting and needing and if you're here it's because it's what you're desperately wanting and needing too. Well, let's just be clear too on the true and false feminine uh, paradigm model. This is not some movement from one part of yourself to another that is one momentous move, move and da-da! I've arrived in my queen and I'm never going to fall back into the false feminine again. If that was so, or if that's what I was saying, I would be putting way too much pressure on you, okay? And that's the last thing I want to be doing. I want you to be clear that the, the learning of the feminine arts that gets you from the false feminine to the true feminine or evolving your true feminine is done with baby steps, it's done through mentoring, and it's done through sisterhood, which is what we've got here now. Okay? So this conversation is about uh, from unconscious to conscious. So one thing that I wanted you to be pretty clear on is that we've got a line here, which we call it this sort of tipping point, this line between the false feminine below and the true feminine above. And we can see it a bit like a, an emergence into some part of yourself, an emergence and a, a rising into your true feminine. Okay. And I say that because I know I know without question and with absolute certitude that inside of every single one of you is the true feminine. And it has been masked by false feminine behaviors, thoughts and beliefs, and also this, the dominant paradigm of the world, which is that of the masculine paradigms, right? So the man mode thing also eclipses our true feminine. So my job here and my desire here more than anything else is to show you how to arise in your true feminine, how to emerge out of this miasm of unconsciousness, right? This world of unconscious stuckness and thoughts and fighting and struggle, which depicts the false feminine into a world where suddenly you are consciously aware, you take responsibility for your life, your livelihood, your love, your relationships, and that you're aware that it is your responsibility uh, when you stand up in that, okay? There's a lot of responsibility when you stand up in your true feminine. It's not like it's some sort of um, 
uh, go free card or the thing is when you emerge into the true feminine you actually emerge into the part of yourself that does and can uh, take on a legacy you arise in your purpose and a sense of mission which actually comes with a lot of responsibility so in lots of ways we can see the unconsciousness of the false feminine as I just don't really want to take responsibility for anything I'm just going to let the world sweep me along and make decisions for me but I'm also going to then pretend that I'm fighting it and I don't like it but I'm not going to take responsibility for myself right so the truth is as we wake up so we can also see this line here as a line of going from sleep and unconsciousness to waking up to turning up waking up and taking responsibility for your your enlightenment for your timeline for your spirituality and perhaps for the legacy purpose community that you lead moving forward okay but we're really talking about the queen here today and a queen is a person who's highly aware conscious she's conscious of her environment she's conscious of her behavior she totally takes responsibility for her own triggers and then she takes responsibility for seeking help mentorship therapy whatever she needs to address those things and if there's one thing I want you to get today arising into the true feminine is not about perfection <laughs> It doesn't suddenly mean that you'll never make a mistake again that you never err again or that you've become some perfect boring version of a queen this is not so it's not true it is not what this is about it is not about perfection it is about evolution it's about revelation it's about allowing this sense of your own queen to awaken and to for you to discover her and I keep doing this action because especially when you start to dive into desire which is one of the core things that I teach in the powerfully feminine intensive you literally dive into yourself and you discover yourself as I always say in the powerfully feminine work this is about self-discovery and it's about becoming powerfully feminine from the inside out and that any aspect of the adornment part of the feminine is fun and joyful and an expression of this inner queen but it is not a, a topping or a covering that you try to cover up the false feminine that doesn't work essentially what I'm wanting you to get is when we and I say we because if there is not perfection as we arise in the Queen there is also the tendency to fall or collapse into unconsciousness and that would describe a fall or a collapse into the false feminine we all do it we all do this so let's not perceive uh, we put too much pressure on ourselves if we expect perfection or that there's some arrival that will never collapse this is the human condition that I'm describing in this model okay so we have to be very human with ourselves it is not meant for us as human beings to work it all out in a bubble and you see one of the things of our world it puts a lot of uh, emphasis on and and speaks about it as strength when somebody achieves something on their own think about it yeah big thing I did and she did it all on her own without any help as if that's a good thing okay it's not a good thing there's nothing to there's nothing heroic about working it out on your own what actually matters on a level of humanity and with regard to what we're learning here together is of sisterhood is asking for help receiving help asking for support it is not weakness when we identify that we can't resolve everything on our own it is a strength to ad admit that you don't know something and to seek help and support it is in fact a bit of a chink in the armor toward more opening toward more vulnerability toward more surrender okay which is all of those things none of those things happen below this line none of those things happen in the false feminine the false feminine stuck in gerbil wheels okay stuck in belief systems that turn around and around and around that they put more and more effort and will into yeah 
more working it out on their own, more pushing and striving, more struggle, more suffering, more fighting. Yeah. There's no opening in that. There's no vulnerability in that. And in fact, the true feminine starts to move us more toward accepting that it is a truth that all human beings are vulnerable. Yeah, we have vulnerability inside us. And as women, this is one of the hallmarks of our experience into the true feminine is letting our vulnerability be acknowledged, be visible. Okay. And actually then you can be, then you can be taken care of. Then people can see you. Then people can help you. The belief of invulnerability that happens below this line is in the realm of unconsciousness. It is not even truth that you're invulnerable. We're all, we're all vulnerable just by the fact that our bodies are, are vulnerable. And especially as women, especially as women, our bodies are vulnerable. So if you liked the video today, please give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't care. Just respond. And let's put in the comments below your experience of the difference between when you go from being unconscious to conscious and how that feels different in terms of your feminine power. And remember, when you have the courage to go out there and shine, you give others permission to do the same. So let's go out there and shine this week.